What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool transfer news video and we have another twist and a very exciting news on the Andre to Liverpool transfer saga because a Brazilian journalist, Emmanuel Luiz, has provided a huge update that Liverpool are still interested in Andre Trindade in the January transfer window. Fluminense are apparently bracing themselves for bids from a Premier League clubs and according to the journalist Liverpool haven't pulled out of the race they are still interested in Andre they are just uh, keeping their cards to close to their chest and this is their tactic to actually lower the asking price of Fluminense if publicly you know Liverpool and other clubs announce that they are interested in Andre that would only end up in a bidding war which Liverpool don't want to end up in a bidding war with uh, Manchester United and Arsenal and Fulham uh, three clubs looking at uh, signing Andre in the January transfer window. So Liverpool had a 30 million euro bid turned down in the summer because uh, Fluminense wanted to keep Andre to win the Copa Ripertores and they actually did it. Congratulations to them. But now I think 35 to 40 million euros would be what it takes uh, for Liverpool to sign Andre. And it is believed that, uh, that this is just a negotiating tactic by Liverpool to actually brief a journalist or journalists that Liverpool are pulling out of the race to sign Andre. Emmanuel Luiz was actually asked how true is that that Liverpool are not planning a move from Fluminense midfielder Andre in January and he said not true at all that's just the way Liverpool negotiate they are still in the race to sign Andre in January but Fluminense is losing their patience and Andre is hugely admired by Fulham and Arsenal. Any chances he could join one of these Premier League clubs? The Brazilian journalist was asked and Emmanuel Luiz answered Fulham are the club that is willing to give Fluminense what they want right now but Liverpool, Arsenal and Man United all want to hijack the deal. Where do you think Andre will end up come the end of the transfer window? Andre will play for one of the big six clubs in the Premier League which is what the player wants. Right now it only depends on the clubs, uh, which club will meet the asking price of Fluminense. Liverpool already have a pre, like uh, a contract agreement with Andre. We already negotiated personal terms with his representatives. So now it's up to Liverpool to actually match the asking price of Fluminense. And the journalist said that it's too early to know what Liverpool will do in the January transfer window because right now it's really quiet. Liverpool are concentrating on the season and we have a huge game in the Premier League on Sunday against Brentford. Let's hope we can win that. But today Chelsea will play Man City and I hope Chelsea will take points off Man City because Chelsea are getting into form and uh, Liverpool need Man City to, to, to drop points, frankly. And guys, if you are excited about this news that Andre could still end up at Liverpool in the January transfer window make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you are new around here and also support my work so I can keep continuing making these videos subscribe to my patreon where you get great benefits additional videos uh, pictures and a lot of exciting career mode stuff as well link is in the video description or you can make a one-time donation click the thanks button below the video thank you so much and Andre has recently spoken out about Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp as a manager specifically Andre said I follow the other games a little bit and I know that Liverpool's work is exceptional without a doubt Jurgen Klopp is a great coach very intelligent and successful but at the moment my coach is Diniz the Fluminense coach a person who I appreciate a lot off the field and on who understands my style of play I know how much I've grown in the field under his guidance I don't like to pro project too much into the future. I have been at Fluminense for 10 years. I have a contract. I'm very happy here. Reaching the final of the Copa Libertadores is a childhood dream and winning it is actually even better. And I just want to enjoy the moment with my teammates. And uh, this is a very important title for the club of Fluminense. So Andre must be absolutely over the moon that he won the final. And I think that is the perfect send off for Andre before he moves 
to a European club. And when you are, when you completed the, the historic feat of winning a major title and big clubs from the Premier League like Arsenal, Man United and Liverpool are interested in you, it's a no-brainer for Fluminense to sell Andre right now and also for Andre to go to Europe to join the next adventure. And Andre has already played twice for the Brazilian national team but he has been called up for the Brazilian internationals in November against Colombia and Argentina. The Argentina-Brazil game will be absolutely epic and Andre will probably play some part but even that, that he's called up uh, to the Brazilian national team at just 22 years old is, is huge because Brazil have an absolutely stacked incredible squad of players. And the Liverpool Echo newspaper is reporting that South American football expert Tim Vickery said that, Le that uh, Andre nearly joined Liverpool in the summer transfer window and he may well make the move to Anfield in the January transfer window. However, he says that links with Andre have been played down by sources and as I said, that might be a negotiating tactic by Liverpool. And it's not a surprise to see talk of Andre re-emerge, giving his pivotal role in Fluminense's success in winning the Copa Libertadores. Jurgen Klopp would no doubt like one more midfielder in the January transfer window, especially because we have Thiago Bajcetic, Curtis Jones and Gravenbeck out injured. Gravenbeck maybe could feature against Brentford but all the other midfielders are out so we are well short in that area if we get one more one or two more injuries in midfield then we could end up in a disastrous situation where you can club can't rotate and uh, the players will be absolutely exhausted and you can't sustain a title challenge with a very small squad in the Premier League which is the most ruthless brutal relentless and physically demanding league in the world so you need a big squad to compete on all fronts and I also wanted to touch on the handball that was given against Liverpool for McAllister apparently handling the ball before the Liverpool equaliser. And I actually checked UEFA's rules, whether they are different to the Premier League rules. And they are, because in the Premier League, only the immediate action before the goal, if there is a handball in that, that's the only way if uh, the handball, um, if the goal is disallowed, so if the player handles uh, the ball in the build-up play, but not immediately before the goal, not immediately before, like uh, in a cross or everything or anything. Uh, but UEFA is different because in the whole build-up uh, to the attack, um, UEFA guidelines say that if there is a handball, then you can disallow the goal. But UEFA also state no handball offense. The UEFA rules also state you UEFA guidelines, no handball offense should be called on a player if the ball is previously deflected from his own body and in particular when the ball does not go towards the goal. And I think that applies to the Alexis McAllister handball. I don't want to keep going on about it because we didn't deserve to get anything from the Toulouse-Liverpool game. We deservedly lost, but it's still frustrating that UEFA's own guidelines, own rules aren't applied properly when VAR called over the referee to disallow the goal for handball because it deflected off McAllister's body. So I think um, the VAR still made an error and it's pretty weird that Liverpool's only two losses came because of VAR referee's errors. And there was 13 seconds before McAllister's, uh, you know, apparent handball and the goal itself. And there was even a clearance from the defender who cleared the ball from the penalty area and then Sobosley crossed it back again. So Liverpool can feel hard done by it. Jürgen Klopp himself said that it's a 100% a goal. It should have been given. So what do you think about this? Let me know in the comments below. And Moises Caicedo revealed something very interesting that it was actually a phone call from Enzo Fernandez, the Chelsea midfielder, which convinced him to join Chelsea and not Liverpool. So it wasn't the big bag of money that Chelsea paid you and that Chelsea are paying you every week. 
That's not what convinced you to go to Chelsea. Yeah, it's Enzo Fernandez's phone call. Yeah, right. Moises Caicedo said, We had a nice chat with Enzo Fernandez, and the fact that the world champion was phoning you, one of the best midfielders in the world, receiving that call was very nice. And uh, Enzo convinced me to come here to Chelsea. He said it was a great club, that there are many young players, there was a togetherness here. I've always enjoyed uh, the bond in a team because I think that if there is that bond, we can deal with any situation we may face, pressure, everything. So that's what motivated me to come here. Now I'm enjoying playing alongside uh, Enzo in training as well, in rondos, we are always together. So I'm very happy, I'm trying to do things better every day, as Enzo said, to be a good example for everyone at the club. But I don't believe uh, Moises Caicedo that uh, that phone call convinced him to join Chelsea. He was a Chelsea boyhood fan uh, growing up, that's fair, you know, we saw pictures in his unveiling of him uh, standing on a, like sitting on a car, like um, a car trunk uh, with his mother in a Chelsea shirt and it was a nice touch that they recreated it. But don't tell me that it wasn't the 300, 350 thousand pounds per week contract that Chelsea offered you because at Liverpool he probably earned half, would, uh, would have earned half or, or maybe a one third of what he earns at Chelsea and it's crazy that Chelsea threw so much money at the team and the contracts uh, on eight or seven year contracts which is absolutely ridiculous and shouldn't even be allowed and Chelsea are still struggling but they actually have a good manager Mauricio Pochettino is very very good so long term Chelsea might uh, become a force again and I'm actually even though I feel dirty saying it I'm actually rooting for Chelsea against Man City even though I don't like either team it's better for Liverpool if Man City lose obviously and Thomas Frank the Brentford manager who I think um, Jurgen Klopp admires a lot and praised him in his pre Brentford press conference saying that he has been doing an amazing job and I mean when you lose your striker your star striker because of a gambling suspension for like eight or nine months and you are still not even close to being relegated you beat Chelsea away from home and Brentford's record away to Premier League teams is actually actually very impressive. So I'm, I'm really a little bit worried for the game tomorrow because if we defend like we defended against Toulouse, we have no chance against Brentford. They have beaten Man City away from home, Chelsea away from home twice. So they, they have a really, really good team. And this is what Thomas Frank said about Liverpool, which I find interesting. That for five years, Liverpool have been one of the top teams, not just in the Premier League, but in the world. They have a fantastic coach, Jurgen Klopp, and a coaching staff, great players. They have new energy in their squad with some of their signings. Sobosla is a fantastic player. Darwin Nunez is getting closer to his top. Diogo Jota is a top player. Luis Diaz, I'm pleased to hear. His parents are now safe. He's a fantastic player. Then you have the standout guy, 25 plus goals, Mo Salah. It's an unbelievable team at Anfield, one of the most difficult away grounds to go to, if not the most difficult. It will be a tough test, but as always, we trust ourselves. We will try to take the game to Liverpool. And yeah, it's going to be a very, very interesting game. And Liverpool absolutely have to turn up at 100%. But I expect Liverpool's first team, best team to be back on the pitch. And surely they will play much better than how we played against Toulouse with our second team. And that's it for today's video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. See you guys. Goodbye.